to say, please check to see that your cell phones are off. I always forget mine, so that's why I'm saying that. Um, so a year ago, about, I was approached by Katarina Wesleyan of this Eagle Gallery in Portland um, and asked if I would like to be part of a three-part exhibition of Willie Hildreth's work. I'm going to... I'm going to try really hard to call her Allison. <laughs> She's an old friend, and I've known her as Willie for a long time. Um, and I, uh, of course, said yes, I would love to. So this is the first part of that three-part exhibition. This is prints and drawings. Um, opening on September 22nd at Speedwell will be um, a retrospective, a 50-year retrospective. Um, and at CMCA, Center for Maine Contemporary Art in Rockland, opening on September 30th, will be an exhibit of her new, larger paintings and drawings, um, which she's been working on. She's been working so hard this year. <laughs> so all of those have been wonderful, wonderful experiences. I encourage you to see all the parts. Um, <laughs> I think we're all here. Uh, you want to make sure that's closed, that screen is closed, there are bees right behind you. Um, okay, so as a gallery director, a lot of my job is, um, is talking about artists' work and you know what motivates them, what you're looking at. And it's always a great pleasure when I'm talking about Alison Hildreth's work because she is an innately curious and adventurous person. And so I look at her work and I see that she just dives straight into all those really big ideas. <laughs> She's kind of fearless in that way. Um, I mean, she goes for the, the mysteries, you know, the, what did the life of the smallest creatures on our planet, <laughs> to migrations, to celestial travel, to, you know, uh, an astonishing array of thoughts appear in her work. Um, and the really, really good thing about tonight is that I'm not going to try to explain all of that because she's here to do it better than I can. So please welcome Alison. So I just want to say something about Elaine to start with. So thank you so much. Oh, sir, thank you. <laughs> I, I'll probably get used to this. Thank you so much. And I have, I have to write this out. Elaine works tirelessly on our behalf, and all the artists know here how hard she works. Curating work, hanging work, having openings where we can all catch up with each other. She whitewashed the walls of this barn. <laughs> the show, which was so nice. She is so generous in so many ways, and she is a fabulous, accomplished artist herself. But does she ever have a show for herself? <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be a good idea. Um, I was going to say a word about bats, because there are a lot of bat monopipes here, and um, how I came to do them, and it really was sitting on the deck of the poor farm and they would come careening out of our attic sort of in these chaotic patterns and flights and go bunk surfing around and I just became fascinated so I started reading out they're such amazing animals and then they moved we kind of cover up having lots of bats in the attic it seems so great so we covered them up and they moved into the barn. And then one year they just disappeared. And I think it was white nose syndrome and they've never come back. And I miss them so. But anyway, so I did these monotypes of, a series of monotypes about bats in flight. And I did them up at the Vinyl Haven Press with Chris Clark. Um, and some of them have, I had woodcuts that um, I had done of Leonardo's um, he, he did these drawing, he, he wanted to fly, so he had these um, flight drawing um, machines. And so I had that as a woodcut background for some of them, not all of them. So those are the monotypes. So, um, and if anyone has any questions about the other stuff in the wall, they can just ask me. Mm -hmm. So I'll dive right in. Um, 
So this, all these long, thin drawings, I'm going to talk about the long, thin, the long, thin drawings on um, vertical, and they all came about because I had been reading a book by W.G. Sabald. I don't know how many of you have read Sabald. He's, <laughs> he's just an amazing, amazing one. This is the best book I've ever read, is The Rings of Saturn. And The Rings of Saturn is all about a hike he takes along the southeast coast of, Eng of Britain, and he just describes the destruction and the decay, And but he pulls so much into his writings. I mean, he talks about orchids, he talks about um, bombings. They, it was a base for bombing in Germany during the war. Um, so um, I went and I got myself a, a, well, and then, you know, he talks about authors and Descartes, Borges, Flaubert, Conrad, the slave economy on sugar plantations, Chinese emperors. I mean, he just somehow, this fascinated me, this idea of you could make connections about so many different things and have it all make sense. So I decided that I was going to do something along that line, and I got this long, thin kitty cotta paper. And so, and that's what these are on with graphite. So I use graphite and wash in a kitty cut of paper. And um, so then I had to come up with, I didn't take a hike through East Anglia, so I had to come up with some idea of a connector. So I had rivers for one, for some of them. And I think rivers, because rivers, rivers have been big in my life because um, Although I've been near the ocean for a long time, when I was growing up, I lived near the Charles River, and um, I used to like to do stuff on the banks of the Charles River, and then one day I found a raft, and I went rafting on the Charles River, and I was near the waterfall, and so I got punished. <laughs> but, and then I had another, later on, I had another hike in the Himalayas along the Zanskar River, and that was about two weeks, and that made a big, big impression on me too. So I just started folding rivers into my walk. But then some of these are connected by highways. Um, so now let's see where I am. Um, so, um, oops, let me see, where am I? Oh yes, so, um, so anyway, um, I, um, so I started trying to connect these different ideas of well, Elaine mentioned the universe and the whole idea of astronomy, and I really am interested in these images that are coming from the Webb telescope. I think they are just so extraordinary, but how do you capture that it really is not so possible, but I tried. And, um, and then some of them are just geometric shapes. I'm also very interested in swarm intelligence and emergent behavior. And so I have read books on ants and termites and um, that kind of thing and, and try to put, I mean, none of this is very obvious in the work, but these are the things that I'm reading and thinking about, so I just wanted to um, talk about them. And then, um, let's see, um, well, the idea is based on Sable, that, that one image will suggest another image and kind of morph in it. It will retain the idea of the previous image. So, um, so that, and that one over there, so that really I was thinking about floods and because of floods, um, migrations that take place. So in the, in the bay of the Ganges River, the Sinrum Islands, um, so those people have been flooded out. The, the islands that they've been living on are sinking. And so um, they're on the move, but nobody really wants them. So this is a whole new problem that we're facing, or right? environmental disasters which are causing these people to move. So um, that is just embedded in that one over there. There are people that are coming along down the rivers and they get into cities and um, they're not welcome in the cities, <laughs> they're moving on, and then they get into the Delta area, and then and then you can turn the whole thing around, and because people are being flooded out of deltas, they're on the move in the other direction. So there is some environmental concern in, in these works, and um, um, so, yeah, so, um, and then, so it, it's all kind of, a um, idea of 
map making, but they're not the kind of maps that you would really situate yourself in. And I think because you, um, oh, I have a quote here. I want to read this quote because because I think this was another thing that kind of started me on everything. I'm sorry, my notes are really pretty bad. Um, <laughs> Um, here it is. Okay, so this is a T.S. Eliot. We will not cease in our explorations, and at the end of our exploring, we will be arrive at where we started and know it for the first time. And I think there's a lot of truth in that. Um, and so I began thinking about the maps I remember from childhood, and um, so it was the Winnie the Pooh, the obvious map, because that's right in the beginning of the book, and then um, there's... Um, Swallows in the Amazons, if I get them, I want to make sure I get all of them. Um, and the Swallows in the Amazons has a map in the beginning of the book, but then there's Wind in the Willows that doesn't. But you know, you sort of know the route because Ratty, was it Mole goes to Ratty, Mole goes across the river to Ratty's house, and Ratty takes Mole, um, Ratty and Mole go down the river to Toad's house. And so you see that little map, and then you, they get in the car with Toad, and go <laughs> down the road. And so, you know, for a child, you can, you can visualize all of that, and, and um, that's great. And The Swallows in the Amazon was a wonderful, wonderful book. And then there's Alice in Wonderland. Um, you know, you can certainly follow her through her journeys. And then, best of all, I think, is Pinocchio, um, who has just such great adventures. So. So, so this is Eliot's idea of how you um, have these things embedded in you that just come back at some time, and you want to, and then you, and then you are compelled to work with them in some way. Um, so, um, and then the other person that talks about this is a quote that I think Esther Eater said made this quote. Um, Esther said it to me. Um, is from Camus. A person's work is nothing but this long, slow trek to rediscover through the detour of art those two or three simple images in whose presence his heart first opened. And if this is um, true, which I think it is, it can clarify some of the mystifying obsessions which we carry into our adult lives. So I think that's really a nice quote because I think it's, it's um, really... Um, um, so look at this tossed salad I have. <laughs> 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 I seem to be going through it so quickly that I'm rattling through. But um, anyway, so um, I think that that really is is the idea of um, of what I'm trying to do. A lot of the work that I do is really um, sort of inspired by literature. Um, I I I love odd books like Swarm Intelligence and um, um, I don't think that Sable is an odd book but it's just your book that has been so so very important to me but children's books are important it's what you re remember is important um, and I think that, that you know if I were a writer which I am definitely not and I'm certainly not a speaker um, <laughs> uh, I, I would I, I, that would, would be really what I would write about. Is just, it's, it's just how you, how you can connect these different ideas. Because basically, I think that the, the, that's what we try to do in in, um, in in so many ways is to make sense of all of these things. And particularly now, we're we're living in such a complex and. Um, environmentally fraught, politically fraught, um, I mean, just, just, just such turmoil all around us. So that if you have these waypoints in your life, I think, I, think that, I think that it's important. I think it's an important thing to have. So I think that that is most of what I have to say. And if any of you have questions, I would love, love, love to answer them. So um, the rest of the things on the wall besides the monotypes are Etchings of so the Beatles back there are um, sort of the more intelligent series, and then um, Galileo's moons. I don't know where they came from, but um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the other thing is some of these have colors, and I have started putting. I, I had these were black and white 
most of the things that I've done are black and white, but um, I started using color because I have this friend that started making her own watercolors, and then they were so successful for her that she started selling them. And now she sells them all over the world, and they're the best. For those of you out there that like to use watercolors, these watercolors are fantastic. They're very saturated. And um, Alina Gallup is her name, and you can go on the web. Yeah. <laughs> see, she's coming from Rome, I can tell her about this <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, so I've been starting to use those a little bit in, in the work, using watercolors. And um, so, um, so these are, this is a little different because this is really not connected by anything but little geometric marks and dots. And I think that because I think that's actually an ad colony down there, um, yeah, so that, that was, so they're organized in very different ways, in very disparate ways, and, um, yeah, so, um, I don't know if I left anything out, is there anything anyone wants? <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Well, I, I'm so intrigued by the painting behind you. I don't know if you could tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, on that one. Yes. Well, it, it's a monotype, and it's and the background is one with the Leonardo with with the the, the, the flying machine. So that's a woodcut, and so you know, I guess everybody here knows how a monotype. A monotype, you have a plexi plate, and you paint onto it. So it's a different, it's not, it's nothing etched or um, or engraved. So this is just painted onto this plate. But I think that maybe there's an etching. Actually, you're right. Yes. Marie, you're right. There's an etching on here. There's an etching on here. So, but it's not, it's the ghost of an etching, which means it's a second printing. And so, so, this, so it was the woodcut which was the flying machine, which is done in very pale inks, and then um, and then this etching, which I think is probably the second pole of the etching, and and then and then painted on top of it. So it's three three different. So this one probably had to go through a press, but um, generally I don't think many of the others did. But thank you for that question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, one of my favorite quotes is, our lives teach us who we are. And whether you're a writer or a painter or any other type of writer, artist, there are things that you intend to do, and there are things that just happen. Yeah. When you were putting together your retrospective, did you learn anything about yourself when you look back over your, your work? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> is there anything you'd like to share? <laughs> um, well, for one thing, you know, there's some work to the retrospective. Well, that I, Oh, excuse me, thank you, Joe. There's some work for the retrospective that I haven't seen for years. You know, they're tucked in the attic or the barn or in the cellar or someplace. So um, that was surprising, some of the work that I had done. Um, another thing that was surprising is I had a, a lot of drawings. I've done a lot of drawings, and um, I really liked them when I got them. <laughs> I thought, well, I've had these bottom drawers for a long time, so this is kind of fun to see them. Um, and that and they'll be in the they'll be in the, the part of that show. So that show is kind of a surprise to me because it's comprised of a whole lot of work that I just haven't seen for a long time. And um, and that's always a kind of revealing too because you you move on in such a different way, I think, in work sometimes. And, and I mean, not everybody does, but but I tend to, 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 to get into different types of things. And so, yeah, so thank you. Yeah, Viva. Hey, first of all, it's a beautiful show. Yeah. And I'd love to talk. Thank you. So I have a question because I'm really interested in the pieces that you call Taking a Line for a Walk. Oh, that's a claim quote. I'm glad you mentioned that. I had to say that. Yeah. And um, what it made me think of was the walking movement, mostly in England, the amblers. And I was curious because these are all walks in your imagination. Yeah. So I was curious whether sometimes you take a walk 
in a more ritualized manner the way some of these walking performance artists do, and whether that informs any of your work. Well, that's, that's, that's really interesting. Uh, well, there is the whole tradition of the flanner and, and people who walk the streets at night to, to, just to watch, to look. And then there is also, there's a man named Ian Sinclair, there's a whole group of London artists, you know, London Orbital and, and all those books. Where, so they have, but they have a different type. Theirs is a much more managed kind of a walk. I mean, they really figure out what they're gonna do. When I walk, I just walk, and I'm not necessarily thinking about art. I'm just looking and um, and and sort of making no notes and recording. And all of a sudden, you know, you see some moss that looks great, or some lichen, or um, yeah. But I'm not. I don't. I don't use walks as a springboard really for for work. Does that does that answer the question? Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I guess that does it. I think so. Thanks. Uh, this is not a question, but an observation. I came in here a few days ago to look at that one in particular behind you. And uh, I stood there in front of it, looking at it, and looking at it, and looking at it. And eventually I realized I didn't have time to look at it. So <laughs> I came back a few days later and looked at it some more, because that's how much depth that was, it just took me from one place to another. Oh. It's extraordinary. It is a captivating. Thank you. Those were, those were I, I enjoyed doing them, and I did quite a few of them. Um, here in sort of, in different, I don't know where all of them are now, but um, yeah, it, every process is so different. You know, printmaking is so different. And printmaking is nice, and I didn't really say this about printmaking, but you have these sort of zen moments where you don't have to think, you're not, you're just, you're just soaking the paper, or you're getting it ready for the press, or you're, you know, there's so much process in printmaking that, that um, it's, it's, you're not just at it all the time. And, um, you know, so, so I'm working on these seven foot paintings now for CMCA, and, um, and they're hard, and so, you know, when I go home at night and I think, oh, this, this is, I either go home at night thinking, this is great, I'm really having somebody a good day, and I go to the night and think, oh my God. Um, or sometimes I go home and think, that's the worst thing I've ever seen, and I come in the next day. So things look different to you, um, and, um, and it's, it's, you know, it's, because you're working in isolation, I think that, um, Sometimes to get another eye is 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 um, it's important. It's if people will be frank, you know, they have to. It's hard for people to be impolite about work. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I I'd like to say that there's something I really really like about the way you use print making mm -hmm. and multimedia and layering and. You know, I find myself very uptight faced with putting something into a metal plate, and if I make a mistake, I have to scrape it out for three weeks. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, what you were doing, just, I saw a group of plates you did, I think, that were insect parts, and you were just putting them on top of each other, let's try this combination. And you flip them around, I mean, you'd work on square plates so you could flip them, and that was, I looked at that, and it's just so much fun. Oh, oh, and, and I love your work. It's and important. it shows in, in your work, you know, and, and so for me, you're very helpful. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Well, I guess it's with printmaking, um, which is, is, has such parameters, um, that to, if you can push yourself a little bit with printmaking, you know, and, and um, um, make mistakes with it, which, which I'm, I'm, it's easy for me to do, it, because, because it's just, printmaking is just one thing, you know? Yeah. I, I have drawings and watercolors, and oils, and blah, blah, blah. Installation, I do some installation work. So, um, so I'm not so invested, I mean, you know, what you do is just so precise and so, Gorgeous. Um, so I could never do that. So. But I want to do what you do. <laughs> 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 Hold up, Chris.
Bruce Clark. <laughs> 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 So I'd like to say thank you, Willie. This is an amazing artist, and I'm so pleased to call her my friend Aww. as well.